Hello, I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the origins of crochet. I truly believe that I've discovered the origins and I'm prepared to share the information. I'm trying to keep it minimalistic but at the end of the day I want to share this information with Limerick Council in Ireland um, to prove to them how I believe that crochet began from there and how the granny square pattern actually helped me um, to be able to prove it. Okay, so as many of you know, I did some historical research. If you've been watching my um, Converse slippers um, videos. And while well, with my historical research, I managed to link my family, um, a lady called Bridget Hutton, and the granny square to the time when um, Victorian crochet book um well it actually wasn't a book at the time but the victorian crochet by weldon and company was written during that period of time okay so i'm just going to just open my book and share with you there is the actual picture it's actually an engraving of the actual um pattern and on the previous page this is the description of how to do it okay and it describes it as a patchwork crochet and essentially when you're doing the actual beginning squares it is like i was shown how to do a granny square i mean except for the chain in the corners i was told different the beginning chain i was told different um the actual stitch was actually slightly different but that's besides the point um but it's basically the granny square okay but it was the edging that gave me an even bigger clue and helped me solve the mystery so let's go back in time and we're going to go right the way back in the very beginning to 1589 and in 1589 I'll just check his name yeah William Lee from Calverton in Nottingham invented a framework machine and this framework knitting machine was to knit socks and it was and they used wool and yarn you know to be able to knit the socks and he went to um, Queen Elizabeth at the time and um, he asked for a patent and she's like, no, no, sorry, you're going to take all the, the work away from my hand workers. No, you can't have it. So he went back to the drawing board and made some more improvements, went back to her again, asked her for a second time. She still said no. So he went to France and he went to France with his machine and the um, king at, in France, he agreed. He was like, yep, OK, then I'll patent your design. But then the king died. And so William Lee died distressed, miserable, um, and virtually in poverty. But his brother, James, he came back to England and he brought the framework machines with him. And um, William Lee's, one of his apprentices, worked on the machine and made it so that it was even better and so that it could produce a really, really fine lace. And that's where Nottingham lace began. Now... That still didn't help me <laughs> with where the crochet begin, but it did because what happened was is that Nottingham lace, you know, it was it was built, it came along, and um, in lace work, what happens is is you're gonna have to. I'm just going to show you my piece of lace. There we go. Look, I've made a piece of lace. This is actually the granny square. It doesn't look anything like it does it when you look at the difference and look at the it made with yarn put it side by side and then i'll show it you made in lace okay now um this is handmade lace now at that time in in nottingham what they was doing with they were, they had strips of lace i didn't have any lace i'm really sorry I was improvising over the weekend it was bank holiday everywhere was shut the only thing I'd got that was anything resembling lace is <laughs> the bag that my onions came in. I couldn't make myself um, something to stretch it out on um, to be able to show you. So I had to use an old fr um, picture frame and I've nailed it into place. But you'll understand why in a minute because this helps make sense. Because we skip a hat um, and as lace is being being made and all the time lace is being made it's being sewn like embroidery stitches into a net background okay and then in 1829 a man called charles walker he was married to a lady in who was she was from nottingham and her dad was a lace manufacturer 
and um, they moved it over to Ireland taking 24 or 29 different ladies with them so that they could teach the Irish how to do some lace work and that's where Limerick lace evolved from. Now the Limerick lace um, is made with two different ways. One way is still using the needle and sewing in and the other way is to use a hook. Now in those days it was still called a needle it looked like the crochet hook with the end on it, but it actually had a wooden handle. Um, and what they used to have to do, if I can show you, it's a bit awkward on the video with this. I've got to be careful I don't stab myself on my nails. But what they used to have to do is that the instructions were, with the hook facing upwards, put it through the net. Catch hold of the yarn and twist the hook and pull it through. Okay, so then they're going to go into the next piece of netting along. It says, put your hook through the netting, wrap the yarn around the hook, twist the hook, so you're catching hold of the yarn and pulling it through. Yeah? And so that was it. So they had to keep on doing this, catching the yarn and pulling it through and making um, these little bits of chain work they then worked into afterwards but this was essentially the beginning bits and so they, there they were making lace work whoops now i would imagine um because i tried to imagine i went you know i was thinking okay then i go back to 1829 i'm i'm an irish lady and i'm in ireland i want a job i've gone to the factory they're showing me that this is what i'm supposed to do they give me a little bit of nets and they give me a hook and they sent me home and said practice because we want you to, you've got to get quick at it and you've got to be neat at it. And um, as you can see, the tension is not right on everything and I'm really struggling to come back through. But I think essentially you're getting the gist of what I'm doing is I'm making the work through the net. OK, so I imagine this lady being at home and she's she's used a pull of a net. Yeah, it's all done with. Now, we all know that we can just pull this out and it'll leave it fine. But in proper net um, it would mark it and so that you would know where you've been so it wouldn't be the same so imagine that she'd run out of net and she sat there and she was messing about with her cotton and by the way this cotton is um, it's Dorcas machine thread this is um, a Victorian um, cotton that I've, I've got with from my collection of goodies <laughs> I'm sorry I collect all sorts of different things but I could imagine her then crocheting and doing the same action so she's pretending she's going through the work, wrap the yarn around, pull it through. Through the work, wrap it round, pull it through. And she made a chain. And when she made this chain, if she hadn't already been taught how to make the chain, because they may well have taught how to make the chain, the chain looked like the netting. So then she began to work back into the chain. And so she was just wrapping the yarn through and pulling it through and then she'd got um, two two strands on a hook and she had to pull the first one through and as you can see it's really quite difficult to be doing this with this little tiny cotton and a tiny tiny needle so I'm going to show you better with some yarn and our number four hook which is um, a G6 in America. Okay, so this is where I'm going to prove with the stitches of how they came the names that they did. So I'm going to make a chain of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we will imagine our Irish lady, she's in Ireland and she's got to this stage and she's working. She's going through underneath one loop, like a net, wrapping the um, yarn around the hook and pulling it through and she had to pull it through that loop as well which made a stitch yeah and so she knew she'd made a stitch and she'd made it in the air without having to use any of the net and there we would got the stitch which then um, she progressed and she decided, like, okay, then what if when I put my 
hook through and I've yarned over and I've come through and I've got to that point there and I've got two strands of yarn on my hook what if I wrap over again and then pull it through and she created another stitch and this was a new stitch and so because to finish off the stitch she had two strands of yarn so she called it a double stitch because the first stitch if we go back to the first stitch only ever has um it just does, does at that point there there is two but when she was pulling it through it was just through through the one okay so i'm going to undo this and show you some more because if i get you the book <coughs> that walter weldon see in the in the very beginning walter weldon this wasn't how it was published it actually was published i'm going to show you one two three four five six right so what was actually done it was like a pamphlet um and it was just like a little um, i don't know maybe like a little magazine but that's how it was done in the first place and you just got these six little pages and it had on it the instructions of how to do the stitches and so we've got here we've got how to do what is classed as this single crochet which i've just been showing you is actually in america they call it this slip stitch and then when it progressed on because if we carry on i'm just going to just do another chain two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i'm just going to move the book out of the way a minute i'm going to show you that once you've gone through the work so what going through just pulling all the way through is classed as a slip stitch in america but in the uk it was classed as a single stitch and then once you've gone through and you've wrapped over and you've got two strands of yarn on your hook and you wrap over again and pull through that there it because you'd got the the two strands of yarn on the hook before she did another wrap over it was so it, that became the double stitch and when she wrapped over once and then went into the work because always wrapping over the yarn and pulling through that was always that was always one stitch that bit there that was a, to complete that bit so it was joined so then she'd got three now when she wrapped over and she went pulled through the two, if I can get it to come through the two, she's still got two stitches on the hook. So she did it again. So she's actually done <coughs> a treble. <coughs> I know it sounds really bizarre, but I really believe because of the way that all of this was because she'd got the three stitches on the hook and let's go back before she finished the actual stitch so that was a treble in her mind in america they actually class it as a double stitch and i do completely understand why because of the way that the stepping up goes but she learned how to do these different stitches now i'm thinking again i'm going back and i'm thinking about being in ireland um and the thing was, is that she was working for a company, she couldn't really share properly. Because if she went and shared what she was um, she was doing, oh, I've made that, I pulled a thread on that and made it come undone. Oh, never mind, what's done is done. But anyway, um, she, uh, she couldn't go around doing this work outside of a job because then she would have been accused of um, stealing their work and things like that. So... Um, the way to de way to hide what she was doing was to do it all in wool, and um, and so I think that what she did is she went to church and she taught and she confessed. To be fair, I think she went to church and she went to Saint Mary's Church in Limerick, and she confessed because um, they do communions and things there. And I think she went to the church and she was like she was telling them what had happened, and um, she. They was trying to tell her, no, 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 you haven't sinned, it's perfectly all right. And so she was teaching those how to do it. Um, and because I really believe, you see, because if you look in all the history things and you go along and it says that there's this lady called Eleanor de la Branchandier. And I'm going to just get you a little extract from her book because in, I've got a photo of the beginning of the book. Um, 
hang on one minute, I'm sorry. Let me show you the photo. At the beginning of the in the beginning of the there we are, look. This there. Knitting and net knitting, crochet and netting with 12 illustrations by Mademoiselle Rigo de la Branchandière. Now she was supposed to be called Eleanor de la Branchandière. And um, when I've done my research, but the book, but it just say it was published in 1846 and it was published in London. And I was thinking, why would a French lady publish her book in London? And so, um, have I got the correct book now? I'm just checking because I've got different books up on here to be able to show you different things. Yes, I have got the correct book. So... Um, when we get to this bit, um, in her book, it says terms used in crochet. To make a chain, make a loop and draw the wool through it. Commence the row, put the needle inside of the stitch and bring the wool through. And work a chain stitch. And it carries on. Now, when it carries on, it then moves on to what it says is a shepherd or a single crochet. Which is actually... Um, there, first round, put the needle in the first chain, stitch, draw the wool through. There will be now two loops on the needle. Draw the last loop through the first, which is the slip stitch, as the, um, the Americans know it. But it's the single crochet, as we know it. And then she says, the plain double or French crochet, which is then she describing what um, is... <laughs> um, <laughs> A different stitch which I think that that one there make a chain after commencing put the needle through the chain there were two on there so that's what in the Americans they call that a double and in England they call this um, the treble stitch and I was like well if Eleanor discovered and invented crochet she would know the names of the stitches so there's that there's that like mm, so, and I was like, I'm, I'm really not sure with this because it doesn't make sense. And then when you actually go along to actually look at the patterns, all the patterns are doilies, which are working around in a circle. So, um, I st it still led me back, you know, and um, I still was like, okay, then, so maybe this Eleanor de la Branchandier did invent it, but she had to be in Ireland and she had to have learned how to tamber to be able to move on to be able to actually be able to crochet. Now, the granny square though, when I look at the border of the granny square, um, I've actually used um, a baby pink. It do, I'm thinking that in Victorian times it would have been a more of a dusky pink, which I actually did do that on my other one, but um, I ran out of yarn. so And it was an old stash yarn that I couldn't share with you where I got it from or anything. So... But when you look at this pattern here, I'm going to break this down. Let's just look at this pink piece here. And I looked at the shape and then I looked at the way that the edging was done. And I was like, if this was the granny square, um, you know, which looks like stained glass windows and has this beautiful edging. To me, it was somebody religious made this pattern because they have got the things to do with church. And I was looking at it and I was thinking about it. And that's where, if you go to Ireland, <laughs> I can't go to Ireland like physically over the weekend like that. But when I looked on the internet, here we've got St. Mary's Cathedral. And this is the church that I think <laughs> that this pattern is designed from. And this is the church in Limerick. And if you look at the church, and you can see there's all these little pieces here, which are the same sort of shape as these pink pieces. And if you stood in the um, cemetery part of it there and looked up, and at the right angle, you'd be able to see the castle, which made me think that these bits here uh, to represent the castle. Now, I know you might think I'm completely nutty. However, when I actually crochet up this work, I can tell whoever wrote this pattern 
was an expert. They have got little stitches to be able to raise up to get to the correct level to be able to do the next stitch there. The picket stitch that is done here is mentioned as a chain four picket stitch. And that was designed to be able to work into to be able to build the castle around the actual little bits of the church. Now, that's my answer. That's what I think. And I truly believe that that is how um, this blanket was designed. I believe it was designed because I really do believe that Irish Bridget wrote this pattern. I can't say that she definitely um, was the person that actually made crochet in the beginning but because she came from Ireland and because of all the references and the things that have gone they've led me and say with the tambour lace it has led me to Limerick which really makes me truly believe that crochet originally came from Limerick and I thought about it because obviously these are all in the colours um, I made up the same pattern in some cream um, cotton and so it does get the feel much more of um more lacy work but obviously it's still done with the um a number four hook so it's still quite thick and you can see the difference that if he was just making that nobody would bat an eyelid at this really they go oh yeah that's nice and pretty but it does look very lacy and looks very feminine but in the colours um and this is where it made me wonder did Bridget come to the UK and see all the colours of the yarns at the market and everything. I mean, she would have been right next to the market by owning a board and lodging place. And did she see all the colours and decide that she was going to make this blanket in the colours to represent the stained glass windows? Because also, if you look at St Mary's Church and you go and look at those things, this cross symbol here <clears throat> is the same cross. I'm sorry, I just need to get my password back in here. Um, if I go to the pictures, because there's more pictures of, um, where is it, there inside, because I was looking, because if you look um, at these pieces here, I did wonder to start off with, were those pink bits representing this area here, um, but if we can, oh, can I click on that picture, yeah I can, right, so if, we, if we, on this picture here we've got the cross in the centre, um, which is the cross in the centre there and in the description of the colours because we've got the deep deep red we've got the gold um, and then the black of the actual windows of doing stained glass windows it just all seemed to make sense to me and it all seemed to marry up so that's my information um, some of you may think I've completely lost the plot but I don't think so you know it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like when you make it um, I've snagged it now because I didn't tie it up or I did tie a little knot in it but obviously this cotton is so slippy it's just come undone but when it's like this and you have a look at it and you can I can just see and when I look at everything else when I look at the tambourine it, to me it all made sense so um, I don't know else what to say except that like I said I don't know who wrote originally began doing crochet Um it could have been the Eleanor de la Branchandier or Mademoiselle Vigo de la Branchandier. But this particular pattern, I still want to believe that Bridget wrote this pattern. And whether she whether she actually discovered crochet and she learned it, or whether she actually mastered the skill of it, because to be fair, you've got to have learned a lot of work to be able to do all of this pretty work. You really do. Um, and to make it look just so beautiful and the sewing in and everything to me she was a a really really fine craftsperson at the end of the day who designed this pattern so thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing i've got in touch with limerick council um i'll let you know if they get back in touch with me um and are interested or whether they just think i'm completely bonkers <laughs> okay thanks again bye for now